I woke up one Saturday morning in early March, Warsaw, Poland, in reflective mood and took to the empty streets in search of a decent coffee. I was about to embark on a business trip to see a client in Sweden. There she is. But the previous night, a key member of staff had asked for two weeks' leave on account of the looming crisis. I had my prejudices about it all, but I felt I had to set them aside for the sake of my staff, so I put my legal hat on and burned the candle into the night over the weekend. I felt I had to take the issue of the current crisis seriously because I am a business owner. Drilling into the evidence, assessing the dangers and risks, the strengths and weaknesses of the case something I do on a daily basis as a criminal and civil lawyer of 25 years experience. Of an adventure, in fact. As governments now locked down entire nations, I felt sure there must be a rational explanation. Whilst on my journey to Vastovic, by land and sea, I had ample time to reflect as I canvassed the views of regular folk and fellow travellers on the journey. Everyone is so afraid. It's a problem. Like prison, it's exactly yeah. like prison. Have they got the virus? No. No, 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 no. no, no. I, I, I'm so afraid to die. That could be a danger with people that are just listening, you know, and not understanding why. In spite of warnings right? of the severity of the crisis and in the teeth of the press coverage which was painting a picture of global Armageddon, I want to thank everyone. I could not help but wonder at the draconian nature right. of the measures taken as countries fell into lockdown like dominoes and leaders jostled in a bizarre competition to top some imaginary league table, rushing through legislation and ordering people from the streets, forcing them to take refuge in their homes. Surely there must be something I was missing. I started to feel like a detective on leave who stumbles on a crime in a small town and is compelled against his better judgment to investigate the mystery. But as I traveled deeper into Scandinavia, my investigations only fortified me in the belief that the global response to the threat was wildly extreme. I think I might be one of you that says, you know, <laughs> it's like, of course it's deadly, but like not a lot more than other viruses. People started getting a bit weird about it and I was thinking to myself, what am I missing? Indeed, it seemed to me that the emergency measures implemented threatened to eclipse the damage caused by the virus itself. I now felt isolated and in exile, much like the Swedes themselves, shunned by their European neighbours. But I was being drawn deeper into the mystery and I had to go further, stubbornly pursuing my line of inquiry into the actions taken by the Swedish, Polish and UK governments. Where was a cool-headed legal view when it was needed? The sort you might expect from a distinguished judge or lawyer. But the answers I was arriving at only raised yet more questions. Why? Why now? Who or what was behind it all? The mysterious affair of COVID-19. A lawyer investigates. No, 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 keep your distance, two metres. <laughs>